good evening to everybody uh, good afternoon good evening good morning whatever uh, time it is there uh, <clears throat> On the Supreme Court's recent uh, rollback of civil liberties, or rather its assault on civil liberties, one needs to understand that uh, the Supreme Court is charged with, with a very, very important responsibility to protect uh, fundamental rights, human rights of the citizens, as well as non-citizens who are in India, such as Rohingya refugees, etc. And quite apart from that, it is also supposed to ensure that the executive and the legislature function within the norms or within the bounds of their powers. In the recent years, since the Narendra Modi government has uh, come to power, we have been seeing a sort of rampant trampling of uh, rights of people, uh, there is, of course, a full-blooded assault on minorities in this country. There are lynch mobs out on the streets. There are lynch mobs on the social media. Laws are being made to somehow reduce them to second-class citizens. Uh, all kinds of things are being done. There are uh, fake encounters being done of Muslims. There are houses of Muslims being demolished just because they are protesting. Uh, but apart from that, we have been seeing an assault on the uh, civil liberties of uh, any dissenter, anybody who stands up and speaks out against this government, uh, especially journalists or uh, activists, etc. A very large number of uh, our activists and journalists are in jail. The, some of our finest human rights activists have been arrested in the Bhima Koregaon case. Many of them were also arrested in the Delhi riots case. Many others are charged with sedition like Siddiq Kappan, etc., or charged under UAPA and are being uh, kept in prison for years altogether and are being denied bail. So in such a uh, situation, the role of the Supreme Court and the High Courts, the higher judiciary in India, becomes even greater uh, because it is really their responsibility and their power. It is their power, their duty, their responsibility to protect the rights of people who are uh, whose rights are being trampled. There are many people in Kashmir who are who have been in jail. Uh, the uh, Article 370 was uh, sort of virtually removed. Uh, Kashmir was converted into, uh, into three union territories. Uh, all those acts have been challenged in the Supreme Court. Uh, many people are in jail. Habeas corpus petitions were filed on their behalf. But we find that all these petitions, the Citizenship Amendment Act, which is clearly discriminatory against Muslims because it leaves out Muslims as one conspicuous uh, religious uh, group, which will not be given citizenship under the Citizenship Amendment Act, even if they are refugees. So therefore, uh, uh, all kinds of violations of human rights are taking place. And we are seeing that many cases which are taken to court for, uh, 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 for, for challenging those state actions, whether it is state actions by way of uh, uh, falsely imprisoning people on uh, bogus charges of sedition, etc., uh, or under UAPA, or even under the penal code. Uh, or under the National Security Act, which allows preventive detention. Those cases are not being heard. The, uh, the challenge to the Citizenship Amendment Act is not being heard. The, uh, uh, the challenge to the change of status of Kashmir has not been heard. So this is one way in which the Supreme Court has been virtually abdicating its role as the uh, guardian of civil liberties and human rights of, of the people in India. Uh, <clears throat> then we find that, uh, uh, that even when cases are heard, in many cases, 
the for example when the bhima koregaon case came before the supreme court of course there was a two to one judgment where the uh, imprisonment of these activists was initially challenged in that case again the supreme court uh, dismissed that challenge and i mean it's a clearly false case against these people uh, several forensic experts have shown that uh, the material on the basis of which they are charged has been planted into in their computer but now it's been almost 4 years uh, and these people are still in jail some of the finest human rights activists in the, in the country uh, <clears throat> so in many cases in the in sidik kapans case of course that case has not yet uh, been decided by the supreme court but the high court has denied him bail in many cases uh, uh, bail has been denied uh, by the high courts or even sometimes by the supreme court so uh, that is another way in which the uh, uh, supreme court has been abdicating its responsibility that is by denying bail in obvious cases where where clearly the charge is uh, bogus and one way in which courts are doing this is because of the supreme court's uh, absolutely faulty interpretation of uh, interpretation or upholding the draconian provisions of bail in the uh, unlawful activities unlawful activities prevention act where uh, the normal principle of bail which is that bail is the rule jail is the exception and bail can only be denied uh, if one of the three things are present that is the person there are reasonable grounds to believe that the person will uh, flee trial he will not be available for trial will flee from justice two that there are reasonable grounds to believe that he will tamper he or she will tamper with evidence and three that he has committed a heinous offense and if released on bail he is likely to repeat those offenses unless one of these three conditions are present bail is the rule but unfortunately under uapa and under the pmla prevention of money laundering act the uh, <laughs> the burden of proof has been reversed so here at least for bail it is provided that the person who is accused has to prove his innocence in order to get bail now it is impossible before trial virtually impossible before trial for anybody to prove his innocence before even the trial begins because and further to compound the problem the supreme court in vatali's case uh, that is a judgment decided by the same infamous judge who recently retired and who gave the judgments in the uh, zakia jafri case of gujarat in the himanshu kumar case uh, of uh, chatisgarh as well as uh, in this pmla case that same judge uh, that is uh, uh, one who recently retired from uh, maharashtra uh, that same judge decided that at the stage of consideration of bail uh, under uapa even the admissibility of evidence which is adduced against the accused person by the police or the security agencies will not be gone into by the court and it will be assumed that any evidence that has been adduced is admissible similarly in the pmla case they have virtually reversed uh, again to reverse the burden of proof and further held that uh, even a formal fir is not necessary before the enforcement directorate can arrest people under the prevention of money laundering act so that draconian act has been made even more draconian by this sort of uh, uh, baleful interpretation to the act given by the supreme court but what has happened recently in the zakia jafri case or in the himanshu kumar case is absolutely shocking not just in these two cases but what happened earlier in that uh, haran pandya murder case see in the haran pandya murder case the 
uh, police had uh, the Gujarat police had charged some uh, Muslims. The High Court gave a scathing judgment while acquitting all those people, saying that the police had completely botched up the investigation. <coughs> thereafter, when the matter thereafter we filed a petition in the Supreme Court that the uh, case needs to be reinvestigated in the light of the facts revealed by the High Court, pointing out that it is impossible for her and Pandya to have been murdered in the way in which the police was claiming, because he, he, he would need to be shot from below while sitting in a car, which is impossible. If he's sitting in a car, it is impossible for him to be shot from below. So therefore, <clears throat> Uh, there were many other facts and circumstances which clearly showed that the Gujarat police investigation was totally bogus. They had uh, falsely implicated the wrong people and the real people behind his murder uh, had not been caught. So we went to the Supreme Court, the, uh, the Center for Public Interest Litigation, went to the Supreme Court with all this evidence, some things which were written in the High Court judgment plus many other things which we had got hold of. And the Supreme Court not only dismissed our petition, but imposed costs upon us, and then went on to reverse the High Court judgment in an absolutely convoluted judgment. That was judgment was given by Justice Arun Mishra, who was another infamous judge who uh, immediately or soon after retirement was made the chairman of the National Human Rights Commission was allowed to retain his uh, official bungalow for nine months, totally in violation of the rules, and thereafter made the chairman of the Human Rights Commission. <clears throat> now, Justice Khanvilkar, who has delivered these other three judgments, uh, uh, including uh, Zakia Jafri, Himanshu Kumar, PMLA, and he had delivered the Batali judgment. He's just retired. We don't know what post he will be given. There are many posts which are uh, uh, vacant. Each, uh, chairmanship of the uh, Law Commission, the, uh, uh, the Lokpal's post is also vacant. Let us see what post he is given. But we have seen from experience that these kind of judges who uh, always side with the government, especially in judgments before their retirement, are usually given some post-retirement jobs, just like Justice Ranjan Gogoi, the Chief Justice, who had delivered that Ayodhya judgment who also delivered that Rafael judgment so, uh, just before retirement. And soon after retirement, he was made a member of the Raj Sabha. But these judgments of uh, Zakia Jafri and Himanshu Kumar sort of go beyond the pale altogether, where they have virtually in Zakia Jafri, the Supreme Court has said that uh, this Tista uh, Setalvad orchestrated a false case uh, or a false charge against the uh, Gujarat government. They say that she had the temerity to question all the high ups in the Gujarat government. And she orchestrated a false case against the Gujarat government. And therefore, she needs to be put in the dock and using that judgment, the Gujarat police has arrested her and she continues, and she, she remains in jail. Now, <clears throat> there were any number of facts and circumstances which showed that the uh, that there was or which indicated that there was complicity of uh, the higher ups and the chief minister and other uh, ministers and senior people in the Gujarat administration in the riots. There was uh, the NHRC report itself when Justice Verma was the chairman of NHRC. The, uh, the NHRC itself had petitioned the Supreme Court for transferring all these Gujarat riot trials outside uh, Gujarat. One of the ministers of the Gujarat government had been convicted uh, for these uh, uh, riots, etc. The, uh, 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 the Supreme Court itself had formed an SIT to investigate, to reinvestigate the Gujarat matters. The Supreme Court had also transferred the trials. The Supreme Court had earlier in a judgment also castigated Mr. Modi by saying that 
these modern day Nero's fiddle while Gujarat was burning. The amicus curiae appointed by the Supreme Court had also questioned the SIT's investigation, which is what Zakia Jafri and uh, Tisa Setalbad were questioning. And despite the fact that the Supreme Court did not even accept Tista to be a petitioner in this case, they have virtually indicted her and said that she should be put in the dock and these activists in air-conditioned rooms uh, sit and make these, have the temerity to make these charges against uh, people in high places and therefore she should be put in the dock. And because of that, uh, the Gujarat police has arrested her. So, uh, I mean, this takes the uh, assault of the Supreme Court, its abdication of their duty or the assault on civil liberties by the Supreme Court to a different level, where a person who has come to the Supreme Court, petitioned the Supreme Court that please investigate this matter, is now being uh, penalized for having approached the Supreme Court. And the same thing they have done in Himanshu Kumar's case. There was, there was enough evidence to suggest that the, uh, these encounters were done of Adiv uh, Adivasis had been killed in these uh, killings in uh, Gompard. And there was enough evidence to suggest that uh, the killings had been uh, done by the police and the security forces. So many tribals had themselves come to the Supreme Court who were eyewitnesses to the killings and who had sworn on affidavit that uh, the, uh, these people uh, had been killed, that their relatives had been killed by the security forces and the police, by the local police, etc. And yet, the Supreme Court just totally relies on the police version or the police investigation in that case and says that these people should be, uh, uh, that Himanshu Kumar should be penalized five lakhs for having brought a false case to the Supreme Court. So it's really uh, something, uh, uh, something beyond bizarre that the Supreme Court has done uh, in, in at least uh, these two, three cases. That is penalizing the petitioner herself or himself for having approached the Supreme Court when of course there was more than enough evidence to justify an independent investigation into these killings, into the Gujarat riots, as well as into uh, uh, the killings of these uh, tribals in Chhattisgarh. But yet, they have uh, not only dismissed that uh, plea, which in, uh, in my view was totally wrong to dismiss it without ordering an uh, independent investigation, but more than that, by penalizing the petitioners. So, uh, uh, it's really uh, uh, very unfortunate that the Supreme Court has uh, gone to uh, these lengths in order to really uh, assault the civil liberties of citizens, including petitioners who approach the Supreme Court. So, uh, uh, all in all, of course, I'm not saying that everything that the Supreme Court has been doing is bad in, rec in the recent past. There are some good judgments also. Uh, for example, recently, Mohammed Zubair was released on bail and the Supreme Court gave a good judgment, again reiterating the basic principles of bail and also pointing out that the, uh, uh, that the authorities and the police authorities are being trigger happy in arresting people for no good reason at all when there is no justification for their arrest. Similarly, <clears throat> in a few other cases, in the Pegasus case, they gave a good order, ordering an independent investigation, but after that, there has been no follow-up of that. Similarly, in the uh, in the case of that uh, Ajay Mishra uh, Taney uh, and his son who mowed down several farmers in his uh, jeep, uh, his bail has been cancelled by the, virtually cancelled by the Supreme Court. So, uh, so there are a few good judgments, but those judgments kind of stand out as exceptions. And we are seeing that in general, the Supreme Court has uh, 
by and large abdicated its responsibility to protect the uh, human rights and fundamental rights of citizens and indeed gone further in, in, in some cases to even assault uh, the civil liberties of the citizens. And uh, as I said, one of the reasons for this is this lure of post-retirement jobs, but uh, there are all kinds of reasons uh, why uh, the Supreme Court is behaving in the way that it is. We are seeing that the independence of the Supreme Court is today uh, seriously under question, seriously under question. Recently, Mr. Sibyl said that he had lost faith in the Supreme Court, and that's the feeling of a large number of citizens in this country. But I still feel that we should not completely lose hope in the Supreme Court. There are still a large number of uh, honest and upright judges, and we need to give them strength. And the way to give them strength is that when they do something which is right, which we see as being uh, correct and uh, uh, by way of uh, protecting civil liberties and human rights, etc., we should applaud them. And when they do something wrong, we should criticize them and criticize them strongly. That way, the good judges who want to stand up but who may be feeling weak right now or isolated right now will get the strength and the courage to stand up. And those who are kind of uh, 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 becoming or have become virtually uh, the rubber stamps of the government, they will be deterred from behaving in the way in which they have been behaving. So the, those are just a few things that I wanted to say on this subject. Thank you very much.